Well, I honor each of you for your presence here today, and especially with the state of the world as it is at the moment. I believe this message is not only timely, but necessary to move humanity forward. In the last 215 days, there have been 250 shootings nationwide. It's happened so often that for many of us, it doesn't even seem like news. And my concern is that for our country, we've lost our soul. So those of you who are committed to doing this work by showing up, by praying, by meditating, by reading spiritual things, by reaching out to those in need, by making sure none are made fun of, that none are judged by the color of their skin or their orientation, that you are the change makers of society itself. You are the ones that are waking us up to the truth. That in fact, we are souls. We are here to be full of light, full of love, full of bliss, full of goodness and compassion. And you are the ones making it happen. You are the ones. So this series, this four-week series, uh, we're going to begin today is very important to me personally and, as I said, I believe not only to our country but to the world. Today is about, begins our series on soul evolution and we need a basis for why we're even, why are we even doing this, what are we even looking at. So for each one of us, we are in a process of evolving. Now, it can look, everyone's evolution looks different. Some of us go slow, can I have an Amen. Some of us go at lightning speed and we wonder what's taking everybody so long. We are also at different stages of our development in terms of how often we've been to planet Earth. So for some of you, if you grew up in Christianity, this will be a stretch, but stay with me. I promise you by the end, you will be with me, okay? If you can just hang in there. Because if you grew up in Christianity, you heard that you were an eternal soul. But you're also probably taught that one day you die, you go to heaven, you walk on paved streets and play a harp for the rest of eternity. Well, what I can assure you of is that in heaven, you're not resting. They're working very hard to support us here on planet Earth. Angels, spirit guides, ancestors that have gone on before us are sending us energy, are supporting us, are working diligently to support our souls moving forward. Because see, they're in the light right now and we're not. We're in this dense planet trying to figure out how to be good humans, how to, how to make life work, right? So you are, in fact, called, if you're here, to grow and expand. You are in an evolutionary process, and in fact, you are evolving. Some of us, again, it might take longer than others, but you are moving forward as a soul. Can I have an amen? amen. So sometimes it feels real difficult, and a lot of people have told me, virtually every person I have talked to one-on-one, -on -one, including my mentor, including a healer I work with, are saying, everything is really hard right now. Everybody I work with is in, like, life crises that they did not imagine themselves, and, right, and, and things that used to feel easy are now feeling really difficult. So the good news I want you to know is, that's, that's a good sign for your soul. You're about to evolve right out of that. So hang on. Don't give up. As the song said, keep pressing, keep blessing, right? Just stay with it. Because you're about to step into the light in a new way that you have not seen before. There are universal energies supporting you. So your intention, the, the intention you're holding, the direction you're choosing to go is very important right now. Very, very important. Every choice has a lot of weight right now cosmically with what is going on. I know it from experience in my own life. I know it from working with people. Right now is a choice point. As you step into the light, you're making a huge choice for your soul. If you're not stepping into the light, also a choice for your soul. So what is the soul? If you're taking notes today, that's number one. What is the soul? Your soul connects you with God. Most important. Your soul also, though, is connected to the here and now reality, like what we like to call 
third dimension reality. Your soul is your connection to God, your connection to the infinite. We all want to be able to say, it is well with my soul, don't we? We all want to be able to say, it is well with my soul. So, <clears throat> your soul is your thoughts, your feelings, your beliefs, your ideas. All that is contained in the soul. You are spirit, soul, body, right? But your, your soul even called forth the body you're in right now. If you're here to grow and expand in consciousness, which you are, then your soul chose the bodily form to come in. It chose the family to be born in, the time to be born in. Your soul is here exactly on purpose because your soul chose this life wave, this time, this place, this family, this energy, this time of turmoil in the world to come in to be a blessing, to grow and evolve because this is what your soul wanted to do and needed to do to grow and evolve. It was your thoughts, your feelings, your beliefs, your desires, your ideas that brought you to this very moment in this form. So everything is right on purpose for you. Your soul has been with you from the very beginning, will continue to be with you when the body dies, and will be reborn again. This is how we get young souls and old souls. Some of us have been here more times than others. And we know what a young soul is, right? This is a, the, the soul that says the one with the most toys wins. Yeah, that's, that's a young soul. Because an old soul says the one with the most love wins. Yeah. We say, you can keep the stuff, man. That ain't nothing. Right? Yeah, that's what an old soul says. Stuff's cool, but what really matters is, yeah, connection. Exactly, exactly. So, we are souls, souls evolving. So, what does this mean? Well, it means we learn to move from the intellect to intuition. Moving from the intellect to intuition. That's number two. The intellect can only get you so far. If you don't um, engage the soul, there's a stop at the intellect. This is what we're seeing running countries right now, is intellect. And it only gets us so far. Right, wrong, bad, good, da 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 and what's amazing, when we're intellect, in the intellect, we are so sure this is the answer. It's about this big. Right? The, the room for you is about this big. It's, it's, but the temptation now, as you start to grow and expand, is you start to look at people not growing and expanding, and it's obvious because of the behaviors, right? So we're not responsible for what we think and feel, but for what we do and say. What we do and say, this is how you... See evolution, what you do and say. So it's easy to um, start judging everybody and, and all of that. If you're doing that, you're back in the intellect, honestly. Right? So we want to stay focused on the intuition. So intuition um, expands what the intellect knows. The intellect knows what you've read, what you've been taught, what you can see when you turn on the television. The intuition can see... Beyond words, the intuition can see beyond images, beyond circumstance, to the higher realization of what's going on. So in the intellect, it's like you're standing at the foot of a mountain looking up. And you say, boy, that's a big journey. And all you can see is like one step in front of the other. But if you're operating from the intuition, you're on the mountaintop and you say, look at that. Boy, that's a big journey, but I know I'm going to make it because here I am. So, see, there's a, a widening, expansive awareness that is not available, simply not available when you're in the intellect. And the intellect is wonderful. We don't throw that out. 
The intuition then works through the intellect. Right? So the, the intuition is informing your mind, and then you know what's next. But it comes from beyond the mind. Intuition comes from the soul, and remember, your soul is connected to what? To God. Right? Your soul is always connected to God. So when you receive this feeling, this knowing, this inner guidance to move forward on something, that is from your soul. And your, your soul is going to be so happy the more you listen. It's going to say, oh boy, we've got somebody serious now. Let's give him more messages. Let's give her more help. Let's give her more support. And the more you rely on it, the more um, active and right on it is. But at first, it can be a little like, it's like sometimes you'll say, I think I'm supposed to do this, but it seems illogical. Raise your hand if you've ever thought that. Mm -hmm. That's just how you know it's from God. The mind is centered in logic. God is beyond logic. God is beyond logic. Say that with me. God is beyond logic. Beyond. Yeah, beyond. The intellect will only get you so far. Have you ever thought a problem to death and then take, taken it into meditation and gotten a whole different idea of how to deal with it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's like you have, the intellect is so limited because it's limited to what you can see, what you can touch. And the intuition is what is unseen. But it ends up manifesting in the physical realm. So even though the intuition is based in the invisible, you get lots of affirmation in the visible as you start moving forward. Things that you didn't know were possible are suddenly possible. And you receive that information through the soul. Again, it impacts and touches the intellect, but it's, the, it's not relying on something you read in a book. Many, many times we've had experiences here in worship. I've had people tell me I've received uh, uh, guidances. I don't even know how I knew it. How? Intuition. Because in God's mind, there is infinite information. Have, uh, I don't know if anybody in here loves to cook. I love to cook, and I've been cooking a lot recently. And sometimes I'll ask if there's a dish that I know somebody in my family made. I'll even ask for help from my ancestors from how, for how to make it. Or I'll ask for intuition on what to put in a dish. I know that sounds like a real benign thing, way to practice it. But it's a wonderful way to practice your intuition. Because you start to be able to recognize that voice that's working in and through you. You start to be able to like tap into a different energy. People often call that intuition your sixth sense right? So, so try that. Something you like to do that you already do, see if you can tap into that intuition to help you do it, right? See if you can tap into this other energy. And remember, some of us will feel it. Some of us will have just this knowing. Some of us might even get like a visual. That, that's cool. If you get visions, I'd like to know about it. I, I'm so fascinated by that because I barely get those. Just once in a great while, I barely get those. Usually I get like a feeling or a knowing about like what's mine to do. What's so amazing about the intuition though is it opens you up. It's expansive. You have more choices. You have more freedom. The intellect is very, very limiting. The intuition, limitless. Intuition is limitless. So the intellect, if you think about it, is kind of the brain of the ego or the personality. And the intuition is kind of the brain of the soul. That's how I think about it. It's like your intuition tapped in, turned on, yes. You know when something is yours to do. This is the goal when we are evolving souls to move from intellect to intuition. One of the key ways we talk about often, and I want to spend a little time on it, <clears throat> is meditation. Um, but real specifically, meditation to shed the personality. There is so much research now that everybody loves to share scientific facts about why we meditate. It lowers heart rate. It, it helps with blood pressure. It's great for anxiety. It's, it's good for your health in general. I mean, yes, yes, and yes. 
But the main reason we meditate is to shed the personality. All that other stuff is wonderful and is a byproduct, but that's, that, that's, it's only a byproduct because it connects us with God, which is our source. Right? So we don't really meditate to lower blood pressure. We do it to shed the personality, to shed this shell that we have falsely identified with as who we really are. You are not your personality. You are not your ego. You are not your looks. Bless you. You're beautiful, but you're not even that. You're not your family. You're not your money. You are a soul. And that's what we want to connect with. So we, want, we meditate to shed the personality self. We meditate to shed the personality self. So I'm going to say to you today, meditate, 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 even if it's five minutes a day. Everybody have five, has five minutes. I don't care if you're 95 or five, you have five minutes a day. Can I have an amen? amen? So you say, I don't know how. I'm saying to you, learn. <laughs> you're a grown up. Oh, I don't know how. I don't have time. <laughs> what? You have the same amount of time we all have. 24-7, 365. You know, I've had people say to me, you know, I really want to come to meditation, but, you know, I, I just can't make it by 6.15. I get off work at 5 and I have to go eat dinner. I say, eat dinner in the car. They go, they go what? Eat dinner in the car? Eat dinner after. Eat a bar. Get over yourself. Make it happen. Put your soul growth first because it's the only thing that matters. All the stuff that we think matters doesn't matter. It is your soul. It is not your personality. It is not what people think about you. It is your soul. Amen? Amen? Find a way to make it happen rather than making excuses to stay small. We make excuses to stay in this personality self because we like it and it's comfortable. You know, when I started ministerial school, I was working full time. I was going to school full time. And I, somehow I made time to meditate a half hour in the morning and a half hour at night. And sometimes I would even meditate for 15 minutes at lunch in the Peace Chapel. And why would I do that? Well, there was a lot on me. And I knew meditation was what was going to move me forward. I got into ministerial school. I thought, was it an accident? Did they know I was only in unity a year? You know, people used to say, oh, you're, you'll never get into ministerial school. I meditated, 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 meditated. I got in. Right? And so while I was there, meditate, meditate, meditate. How could I? Full-time school, full-time job. I did not leave the house until a half hour was on my mat meditating. Committed to my spiritual growth. I've gone up and down since then. Sometimes I meditate a half hour. Sometimes it's 15 minutes. But every single day there's time connecting in with spirit. Journaling. Doing my deep breathing. In a space of receptivity. Make the time. Often what I've done, if I'm too busy to, to have a, uh, a morning time or there's something calling me out early, then I take time away at lunch. I figure it out. Make your soul evolution work, your soul growth, the most important thing. It's the only thing that matters. It's the only thing that matters. Say that with me. It's the only thing that matters. So when you're new to meditation too, some, a couple of the things that can happen is sometimes... You start to get like a tingly feeling up here. Sometimes when you close your eyes, you start to see colors. Bless all of it. Bless all of it. And if you need help, come to Wednesday night meditation, 615. I also want to encourage you too that um, there's meditation today with Marilyn McCrulis, healing meditation after service at 1245. It's right here. You can do that. I also want to encourage you if you're brand new to maybe use um, guided visualizations. Because here's the other thing everybody says. Well, my mind is too busy. Say this with me. <laughs> mine too. I mean, get in line. Everybody's li uh, mind is busy. The Dalai Lama's mind is busy. You understand what I'm saying? Everyone's mind is busy. That's not particular to you. It's what the mind does. It thinks over and over and over again. And our job in the meditation is to learn to quiet the mind. Once you start doing it, you won't be able to stop. Because you're going to go, man, this is cool. This is better than any drug, better than any drink. 
because my mind is quiet and I'm at peace. That's what we want. So the very last point we're talking about today is then living from soul awareness. <clears throat> As we begin to live from our soul, this may be cheesy, not our role, um, as we begin to live from our soul, not our role or personality uh, self, what happens is we are less reactive in times of trouble and life happening. We are more receptive to good coming in, and we're more re uh, receptive to new ideas. We We want to be living from a soul awareness because we touch that inner peace and we find, I have found, I am at home in myself. I am at home in myself. See if you can just breathe into that idea that you're totally at home in yourself. That there's nobody you have to try to convince or be. You're already there. Daniel Namod's song says, I'm already there, I'm already home, I'm already safe in my eternal soul. Bless you. You just sneezed out that personality. Good girl. <laughs> she said, I'm done with that. <laughs> that works. Hmm, so take a nice deep breath and imagine living life from soul awareness. Imagine being able to see things as they really are. So you are a soul moving from intellect to intuition. You are a soul meditating to shed the personality so that you can live from soul. That is the truth. And so it is. <laughs>